Thank you for joining us at Servant Crafts today. We're working on a felt stocking kit made by Usilla. It is, oh, I've got my assistant over my shoulder here. This is Finnegan. He just really wants to be on camera. This stocking kit is called St. Nick's Visit. Uh, it's hard to get it in the picture. There we go. Uh, it is a beautiful kit. It is probably to this day one of my favorite kits to have worked on. Um, it has got a great deal of detail. It's got some new little nuances or aspects that I always enjoy and lots and lots of sequins. Again, one of my favorite things. So let's get started and St. Nicholas pray for us. I wanted you to have a chance to see the foundation layer of this stocking. So what I've done is applied the braid trim to the top, <clears throat> the gold embroidery along this edge, and the green sequins. And down at the bottom, there are some white sequins. That's it. Everything else is the foundation for what we'll build on top of it. Today I'm getting started, started to work on some more bits of this stocking. As you can see, the base of the stocking is white. There are some sequins down here at the bottom, but the main part of the stocking up here is the window here that I've added, the wallpaper, all the bits here in the little snow that's piled up in the window. So let's get started on what's the next step for today. The next piece is the tree. And I do need to cut that out. So out come the glasses and the scissors. Just, I'll go over some of the basic um, uh, tips that I have for working on these stockings. One of them is to, when you cut the piece out like I have done here, I have the number still attached to the piece, number 12. That allows me to, when I go back to that piece of green felt, not to have a stray number sitting there to potentially confuse me. It doesn't take a whole lot to confuse me. And always you're going to cut just on the inside of the lines that they have marked for us. Again, a good pair of pointed sharp scissors are highly recommended. Okay, um, to work on sequins, they're always, remember, going to embroider first and then work on the sequins. That will eliminate some of the catching that happens uh, of your thread when you are <clears throat> trying to embroider and the sequins are already there. Now I always take one strand of thread, I thread it through the bead and sequin needle which is the very narrow and usually a little bit longer needles that are included in your package and then pull the two ends together and knot it. That way I have a double strand to work with, but I only have to get one strand through the eye of the needle, which is very, very narrow. And then <clears throat> the sequins on this tree are here, 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 here. I've got a few on already. Um, they're quite spread apart, but <clears throat> because the back of this will not be on the inside of the stocking. <clears throat> I am allowing myself to drag the thread longer than I normally would. But at each drag, before I drag it, I'm knotting the thread 
and then dragging, putting a knot. Um, I find this will hold the sequins <clears throat> um, a little tighter. And should they get pulled, and they, they do sometimes get, you know, caught or snagged on something, um, they won't pull out um, the way that they would if, uh, if I didn't knot them. So I'm going to go put the needle right through the dot, moisten my finger to pick up a sequin and put it on with the curve going up, you know, so it's like a dish. <clears throat> Pull that through and hold it and pick up a clear bead for a green sequins and put it back through. Oops. Even when there aren't other sequins, it still can get caught. Okay, here we go, trying to understand the garland. <clears throat> I went online to my own links and purchased these new containers. I have them out there in a link because uh, I didn't have enough uh, with having two kits going at the same time. The, the um, Christmas tree skirt and this stocking. I didn't have enough for these um, unique different beads and things um, to put them in containers. So I got myself some more and I'm quite pleased with them. I think they are, they definitely do the job. Oh, look at that, static, <laughs> static held them up in there. Okay, so I have threaded up a bead needle with white because the directions are here that the garland is going to use the pattern of one gold bead and five pearls and then repeat. One gold and five pearls. And let me see. Um, I believe it is here that we have the instructions for how to do this. Strong beads. Thread the needle with two strands of matching colored floss. Okay, I've done that. At one end, bring the needle up through the felt at the beginning of a line. Okay, I'll try this top line here at the beginning of a line. Okie doke. Through the beginning of a line. String four beads. Okay, oh, gotta make sure you get a knot that's big enough. But it doesn't pull through and have okay now let's see if it will oops, oops, oops. okay bringing it up through the end and it says one gold bead and four This makes five beads, and it says to do four, but five shouldn't be too much different. String the, the beads, okay. Bring the needle down through the felt. Well, I guess down right here. Down through the felt, pulling the floss slightly so that the four beads okay. so that the beads are right up against one another in a row. Bring the needle up through the felt between the second and the third, I should 
probably be doing this really with only three, but we'll try it here. Okay, right there in the second and the third. Flip the needle through the beads, these two beads here. Okay. those two beads and then I'm supposed to string four more so it's going to one gold and one four beads. I'm going to do it correctly this time. Okay. That should go to there. Right there. But I think I want to bring the needle down over here. There. between these two here where the curve is and then through these two Okay, once again, four beads there. Looks like that's going to finish this one. We'll go down right there. The end. A little bit awkward. A lot to hang on to. stretch my thread down to the next group so I definitely want to tie this off back here and cut it a knot of course and let's try another row of these update on the stocking. I finished the tree itself. Take that up close. I was very pleased with how it turned out. And the way they directed on how to buy them. Follow the directions really carefully and follow them. And you'll end up with something you really like. 
I like this so much better than the beads I did on another stocking way back when. Um, was not happy with those when they were finished, but I really um, know what else to do to fix them. So this um, lovely, 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 um, very thrilled. Be the trees finished. The star on top and all the ornaments, a beautiful garland. I'll give you a little heads up on some of the things I got done last night. Not a whole lot, um, but Santa got his pants. There's a little bit of embroidery, but sequins on the edges of his pants. And then he got his vest front, which I just love. I'm a big fan of green. I love detail and embroidery. And I just think that is going to be so strikingly sharp when we get the rest of him done. Well, we've got some more progress to report <clears throat> on the stocking called St. Nick's Visit. Here's what it looks like right now. Okay, I'll try to give you some close-up. I think that we've done the vest and finished his coat since we talked to you. And um, <clears throat> we've got a couple of uh, gifts that are going into his Santa's bag. Uh, and I think that's about it. The coat. Oh, his face. Oh, of course. Yes. Poor Santa. Santa's gotten his hat, the trim on his hat, his face, which is way down underneath here, and the embroidery that goes on that, uh, a little tuft of his hair, his beard, <clears throat> and his um, mustache. There's a lot of work in, in that just small area, lots of sequins, lots of embroidery, um, and lots of stuffing to kind of make him 3D. His, also his mustache is, is not fully tacked down so that it, it does give it more of a 3D effect. So, and on this, this braid, that goes around his coat both on both sides. It also goes around the top. I wanted to just let you know that I used this product. Don't know if it's still available, but I will research it <clears throat> and see if I can find it and put a link in the description for you. It's Aileen's Stop Fraying, or I, I've seen it called Fray Check. That might be a different brand. Um, but it's kind of like, almost like an Elmer's glue <clears throat> that you can put and that I did put on the ends of this braid because after you cut it, it did want to separate. Um, I did stitch it, uh, the end, over the end quite a bit, several times, um, even though I had applied the fray, the stop fraying um, stuff. It's, it's white like Elmer's glue but it is um, washable, so it's, it's made for fabrics and it does remain um, somewhat pliable after it dries. Um, but really important, I felt, um, for this, these braid applications. Um, they were very difficult. They're a little stiff, so they're a little difficult to get around the corners and everything. Um, but if the ends just came unbraided, and you can see this is really just a braid of gold cording <clears throat> of multiple strands, um, it could really be a problem. So I, I found this and um, it worked really well. I will, and again, I will link it um, in my description so that you can uh, find it out there. If you have a situation um, like I did here with this kind of braiding. So uh, there he is so far. Next visit. Um, there's I am approximately 50% done if you go by the numbers of the things that um, that I've applied. So I am at the the candy cane that will be applied right here is 56 out of 130 pieces. 
but it looks like it's practically done, doesn't it? Well, these pieces that are down here, these are candy canes. Some of those candy canes have multiple pieces. This is a little teddy bear, many pieces in there, um, a little train, a rocking horse. So it's these toys um, that have many small little pieces in them that uh, do add up to the rest of the numbers of pieces on this stocking. Uh, so that's one way that I can judge a stocking basically on kind of um, how much to charge, one thing, and um, just how, how difficult it is. That's one thing that I wish they would put in the description when you're purchasing a stocking is how many pieces are there? Because um, that really does tell you a lot. Um, and again, each one of these little pieces is a number and is included in there. Um, <clears throat> like the star has a front and a back. His uh, mustache has a front and a back. Um, some of the toys and packages will have a front and a back. So that all adds up. But it does give you a general idea of how, what the level of difficulty is in a stocking based on the number of uh, pieces there are in the kit. Okay, I thought I would just reiterate a couple of things. One of them is stuffing. When it says to stuff a piece, and this is the piece that I'm going to stuff, this little pom-pom, and sew the back on, this amount of stuffing seems like, yeah, that might be right. No. Too much. Too much stuffing for what this is. So I'm going to try to pull it probably in half, about equally if I can. And then this is what I have left. So this is the amount of stuffing I'm going to ball up to fit into here. So I like to try to, it's just got so many little hairy ends and it's almost like a spider web. I like to try to make kind of a tight ball. I know it's going to expand inside there, so I'm not too worried about it, but it helps me get all the ends in and then place that bit on top. All right, back and ready to go. When I am stitching a front and a back together, I always like to go into just one side and that puts my knot in the middle. Make sure that it can't ever be seen or found. And then this one is just going to be a quick whip up all the way around. I'm going to go in and come out the back and put my knot here. Almost finished. It's getting so close. The only thing that's left is the little train engine uh, right there. Let's get a close look of what we've done. The bow on the package here. Candy cane. This is the on this darling, darling rocking horse. That she was fun to do. And I love the, the fact that there's things that are 3D. I don't know that they're not just all flat, but there's layers. So now the last thing before we finish is this little cheeky thing. So we'll get started with him. Just as a point of interest, the little train is done. So cute. This, that little train is made up of 14 right? oh, wow. amazing that little little feature. Um and of course all the sequins and the embroidery that goes on there. Um, but I was shocked at how much time it took. <laughs> But fun, I love the sequence. And here's the home tab. 
kind of a nice addition. Um, I've never had a stocking with that many decoration on the cap. Um, so this is kind of a special or what I do is I fold the cap. And I always just use the back of the stocking. I attach it to the inside back of the stocking. I leave space here so that I can sew the stocking front to back, not have the, the cap involved in that at all. And then when I stitch it, um, I stitch a square so that I've got a double um, floss. My floss is double. Kind of a square. It doesn't look beautiful on the back. But uh, it's the same color, so it doesn't show much. So very, very functional. Now, just fine. And I will use white here so that. Don't be surprised when you're putting it to the front. There's some little places, especially for me down here, where there's so much attached um, that it um, kind of doesn't fit perfectly. Go ahead, pull it flat, turn it down, throw it on, and when you're finished, if there's any place like here, little bit of an edge that hangs out. Just trim that off and sew it out. Um, wherever you can, what I do, I've got something that is in the way, like this package, like Santa's bow, this package. I will turn it over and stitch through the white of the front side. Should I stitch? the front white, but not all the way through to the hospital package, so that I can be sure that it's attached firmly, but it's not going to show. It would, there would be no way to make it look nice if you sewed right across that package or across something. So a lot of those stitches I can grab and attach to the, the back of the front. <laughs> the front back, and um, so it gets attached very securely. Yes, finished except for its name, personalization, all sewn now to the back. Stocking, <clears throat> white, because this back of the stocking is white, red to stitch it, but it is hand stitched. It is very secure. I've never had any issue with one of the stockings um, <clears throat> coming apart or anything. But there he is, St. Nick's Visit.